I don't care about social media. Mm -hmm. I don't care about Facebook, Instagram. I didn't care about having a social media presence. I make money without social media, mm. and that's powerful to me. Yeah. I've been sitting in rooms with individuals that make millions of dollars, and a lot of their conversations literally be, how can we make money if tomorrow I wake up and people don't like me? Mm. Having money is great, mm. but if you're not changing people's lives with all the money that you're acquiring, then like I said, I'm the basic principle. What are you doing in life today? Yeah. Just because you acquire money doesn't mean that you acquire happiness. Mm. I'm depressed just like the next person. Mm. Yeah, I could get on a jet and fly here, I do things like that sometimes, but once I do it, I'm still looking in my mind like I'm hurt. Yeah. I'm at the point in my life right now where I'm trying to buy happiness mm. and it's not working. Mm. It's easy to reach this level of success, yeah. but it's hard to stay at this level of success mm. because yeah. of the simple fact that I have let my success be determined mm. by the people around me mm. versus me deciding what my own success Sheesh. is. So the reason why I say yeah. that is my success isn't measured by the stuff that I have. Yeah. My success is measured by the lives I've changed. Oh, hey, gentlemen, listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asks cash to get your man right Thursday night. 8 p.m. to see him change your life. Millionaire mind set the best on earth. Blueprints of wealth and knowledge network. To get it while you can and he's standing right here. Just come and sat the phone to see black millionaires. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come and sat the phone to see black millionaires. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You won't ask cash, you can catch it right here in the vault. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, uh, another powerful show. If you don't know, this is the greatest money mindset show on the planet. And this show is gonna be a powerful show for so many different reasons, right? You understand that we just, uh, we're just coming through a pandemic. We talk about COVID-19 and how it just shattered everybody. I don't care where you're from, you know, COVID-19 has really shattered everybody's lives. And it really kind of heightened people's ability to care for their loved ones or think about their loved ones. I've personally uh, have lost some 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 people through you know COVID nineteen, uh, but then just in just in healthcare uh, in general. I'll give you a, a quick personal story. Is that like my mom uh, in two thousand and ten had a stroke, and when she had the stroke. Luckily, uh, you know, someone was home and we, you know, we were able to get her to the hospital uh, and, and she didn't lose her life at that moment. So my mom has since passed, passed away. But uh, in 2010, she, she had this, this whole issue with, the, with, with, with having a stroke. Her, her left, left side was paralyzed. And then, yeah. and then once her left side was paralyzed, we had to figure out, all right, are we going to put her in a nursing home? Are we going to keep her home? Um, and so we tried keeping her home. Um, and you know, she wound up having a seizure. So it was like, all right, we need to put it in her nursing home. Um, and so just understanding that dynamic of, uh, getting qualified people to be able to take care of, uh, your loved one is really, really important. And the gentleman I have today, Jonathan Gooch, who is literally, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm not saying this light, lightly, like he is revolutionizing uh, the home healthcare business um, on a different level, so much so that I believe when you're a blessing to others, uh, you then get blessed by God, by the universe, whatever you believe in, and his blessings are out of control. We're going to talk about that too. Uh, but Jonathan Gooch, what's up, hey, brother? Hey, how you doing, boss? Hey, man, on, man, thank you. Look, I just want to say thank you for having me on yes. the show. I've seen a lot of other influential people sit right here in this chair, yes. and for you to have me sitting here, man, like you literally, you literally changed my life with just... Even inviting me to even sit down here with you, I'm telling you, boss. Thank you. No, thank no, you it's so my much, pleasure. Guys. It's my thank pleasure. So and I think, I think that's, I think, and 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 we, you know, I want, I want to start, but I want to just say something to that too, man. I think that, you know, for me, one of the reasons why we started the show inside the vault uh, was to really give it a mixture uh, and change the narrative of what influential means, mm -hmm. uh, change the narrative of what success looks like and feels like. Because mm -hmm. I know for, you know, for me growing up in the projects, um, there was always this, like success was either if you was a rapper, yeah. uh, if you was a drug dealer, uh, if you, you know, if, if, if you were in entertainment, then oh, you were successful. I mean, but then, yeah. Right? Not a rapper, <laughs> not an athlete, but an entrepreneur. You know. And so it's like, yo, what, what about the guy who owned the candy store? Or what yeah. about the guy who owned the laundromat? Like, why why he not a legend, right? Mm -hmm. why, 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 why the kingpin a legend? Why, when I, when I go back home to Harlem and all we talk about is the legends and we talk about kingpins? And so um, it, it's, it's, it's actually a pleasure for me to have you, no, you know what I'm saying? Because, 
you know, like you a young legend, bro. Like you, <laughs> like you, you doing you like I'm telling you, like you doing some <laughs> stuff that at the end of the day, it when we start when we start to shift, right? Because we shift it. We are. We shift in the culture, and when it, when the culture continues to fully shift and get get in alignment with what's real. Um, no, definitely, they're gonna be a group of group of us that that are, that are legends, living legends. Though not like yo, he's dead now. Let's put, yeah. let's give him a mural. Like nah, like as we alive, we changing lives. We making millionaires. We showing that we could make our own millions. So yeah. like this is this is different. You know what I'm saying? This is like the this is like the, the Harlem Renaissance <laughs> 3.0, if you ask me. But uh, before we get too carried away, on, let's go. <laughs> um, you know, for those who don't know, right? Yeah. Um, who is, right? Who is Gooch, yeah. right? Look, that, who that, that, is that, that, Jonathan Gooch? Right. So, so just to give you guys um, a little bit about my background, I own an in-home nursing agency. Mm -hmm. So in such, what I do is I send out nurses, which are RNs, LPNs, which are licensed practical nurses, and CNAs and companion sitters to take care of individuals inside of the home that cannot take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So how you say it that your, um, your mother had a stroke? Mm -hmm. So in that situation, a lot of people don't know their actual insurance coverages. What could have happened was they would have paid, your insurance company or Medicaid or Medicare would have paid for you to actually have a nurse mm -hmm. to come out and sit with your mother and check up on your mother multiple times throughout the week. Mm -hmm. The reason why that's so important is because now you have somebody that's medically trained mm -hmm. inside of the home watching over your mother so they can actually look at certain things that the normal person don't know to look at mm -hmm. and give like, so let's say like if it's something like, if she wasn't eating or if she was acting a certain type of way, they are trained to notice things before it happens mm -hmm. and then they probably could have got her help before something else to, um, before something else could have happened that could have kind of been avoided. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, that's what I do. The reason why I love what I do is because at the end of the day, I actually love helping people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So something that I have done is, the ending factor, like you said, is the mansion, it's the mm -hmm. Lamborghini, mm -hmm. it's all the cars and things like that. But I don't really care about that part. Mm -hmm. I have a passion for helping people and I fell in love with the process mm. of getting to where I am today. Mm. So one major thing that I always tell people is everybody look at they like, I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to do this so I can be rich, so I can take care of my family. That's all nice. But at the end of the day, sometimes you need to fall in love with the process. Mm. I fell in love with the process because mm. we all set goals. But we know in today's world, and I'm, I'm a realist, mm. I, I keep it real. You can do everything right mm. and still not be successful mm. and reach your goal. Mm. These are the things that we need to understand and realize. Mm. And these are the things that I tell you, if you fall in love with the process of making it there, mm. then no matter where you end up at, mm. you are going to love yourself and you're mm. going to love your life. Mm. Sometimes people look at it like, okay, I want to be this person, I want to be this multimillionaire, and then they never reach it, mm. and they're always trying to get there. Mm. And then they look at themselves as somebody who made it as being like, well, my life is not is worth nothing mm. because of the simple fact that this person made it and I didn't. But no, you was chasing your dreams and your goals. Mm. You may not have made it there, but you fell in love with the process. So I fell in love with the process of helping people. Mm -hmm. I just happened to be one of the people that made it. But now because I've made it and I made a million mistakes, mm -hmm. now I've became a coach and actually helped people be able to reach and attain their goals in the home healthcare field. Mm -hmm. So something else that I do, I own a nun emergency ambulance company. Mm -hmm. So in such, what I do is we pick up patients for dialysis. Mm -hmm. um, we pick up patients from the hospital. If, you're, if your mother or a loved one is in a stretcher mm -hmm. and they have to leave the hospital, they don't call 911. That's considered an emergency. They mm -hmm. have to leave, have a certain amount of vans on the road 24 hours a day. They call a non-emergency. So they call a company like mine. Mm -hmm. We come pick them up. We build their insurance to take them home. If your mother or something's on dialysis, we pick her up. We charge her Medicaid, Medicare. And the funny thing is, people, when they, they don't understand the numbers, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So to pick up a dialysis patient, they pay me $150 to pick them up in $7 a mile mm -hmm. just to take them there. Right. And then they pay me another $150 and $7 a mile to bring them back. Mm. So in such, and then I pay my staff, which is going to be EMS, which is going to be paramedic. I pay them around $15 an hour. And then, you know, it only takes two hours to get them there and get them back mm. between the two. So I'm in maybe like $60, $70. Mm. So then I just made $240 off of, you know, picking that patient up, mm. which is all nice and dandy. But at the end of the day, that's nice being able to make that money. But what the more passion is knowing that you're at work mm. and you can't get your mother there. Mm. So my company is going to take care, take care of your loved one and make sure that she gets there. Yeah. So what I love and what I teach is I've been able to take my passion and make it into a reality of helping people and still make good money doing what I do at the end of the day. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this right now. 
I always tell people, healthcare changes the world. The reason why healthcare changes the world is because if I can sit right here with you now, and we're gonna get deep for just understand. Yeah, 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 if yeah. I can sit right here with you right now and I tell you to spend one more day with your mother, yeah. one more day, or one more day with your child, yeah. give me everything that you have materialistic, what, what would you do? I, we, we, you, you wouldn't even finish the sentence and, I, and that's That it. is yeah, the point. Yeah. What other industry do you know where yeah. you can tell somebody that? Yeah. And, that and honestly, in my line of work, it comes down to that sometimes. Mm. We have drugs. We have people that have hospital bills. Mm. And one of the reasons why most people are in debt is because of health care. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, some people have to pay for things that they just don't have the money to pay so they can live with their loved ones for one more day or one more week. Yeah. So that's why I tell people bet on health care at the end of the day, but even such, living in an industry where I get to make sure that people get to spend more time with their loved ones or make sure that the loved ones that they have, that their lives are better, is at that moment, like that's indescribable. I've, I've literally had parents cry to me after being on the phone with me for 10 minutes mm. because they weren't able to work yeah. Because they're losing their house, yeah. because their loved one is getting sick and they cannot, they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So what I do, I've changed my passion into a love. So I tell all the people out here that at the end of the day, you have to do what you love in this world. Yeah. And sometimes you can't let other people tell you what, what you love and what makes you happy. Yeah. So what I want, with what I do, I love what I do. That's why I'm so passionate about it, because every day I wake up, I know that my company, my nurses, we're changing the world. Yep. If you're not changing the world, then what are you here absolutely, for? Absolutely. And people think that you have to have a job that changes the world. No, you can change the world by what you do, and that's what I do for what I do for a living, mm -hmm. but you can also do charity events. You also can give time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget how to be human. Mm -hmm. And we got to get back to being nice and being a human, opening up the door for the young lady coming through the door, mm -hmm. being able to give. Because, you know, and one thing I tell people is the reason why I'm so successful in what I do is because I realized a lot of my faults. Mm. So what I've done is I've literally had a conversation with myself multiple times in the mirror. And I look at myself and I literally say, what are things I'm not good at? Mm. So when I came and I looked at the things that I'm not good at, and you got to get deep. It can't be things I'm not good at like, oh, you know, I, I just don't, you know, I can't write. I can't do this. We got to get deeper. So one of the things that I'm not good at, and I'm going to be real with you, like I said, it's completely real. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how you're supposed to love thy neighbor? Mm -hmm. I would never love thy neighbor like I love myself. Mm -hmm. So that's getting deep. When I say that, I don't mean that in a way that I would never change. But as of right now, like I'm, I'm just on this path. So what, but the thing is, a lot of people want to change their lives, uh -huh. but they don't know where to start at. Uh -huh. So how can you change your life if you don't know where to start at? Uh -huh. You have to have that conversation with yourself of being, you know what? Let me actually understand who I am uh -huh. as a real person. Uh -huh. Most of the time, we can't even look ourselves in the mirror and understand the person in front of us. We uh -huh. think that we're this person that would give the shirt off our back. Yeah. You know, you hear it when people pass away. This person was this good. He never hurt nobody. He never did this. But in reality, we're not the people that we really think of ourselves yeah. as. Yeah. So we have to understand who we are, and then we can help other people. Yeah. So yeah. I've literally had times where I've broken down crime because the person that I seen in the mirror uh -huh was not the person I thought I was. Mm, so mm. like I said, as of right now today, I'm not the person that would give the shirt off my back to somebody else. Mm. But now that I know that, I know where I can build from. Yeah. So I just like to tell people, you know, especially getting into this industry, you have to know your faults. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna be giving so much to people and you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you'll do more harm than help. Right. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's where we are, you know, at the end of the day. So I know I have to drop a couple bars. My no, bad. no, 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 it's all good. No, no, I love it. I love it. And, that, and that's why I, you know, I, you know, wanted you to, to you know, because I feel the passion, yeah. you know. Um, and so that's why I wanted you to keep going. But like, where, where does that, where does that passion come from, right? So like, um, you know, we, we know, because uh, there's a lot I could, I could unpack, yeah. right? Um, but before we get there, though, it's like, uh, give me the Jonathan Gooch story, though, right? So, like, how 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 did how did Gooch get to a point where that's a dope last name, man? Right? <laughs> how did Gooch get to the point where he's like, man, I'm passionate. I love to help people. Like, are you a doctor? Did you work in a hospital? So, like, so, so that's the thing about it. For what I do, and that's why I love what I do because a lot of people. I can ask you this question right now. How many people you know own a actual healthcare company? Man. Yeah, just one, and the reason, and the reason why that is, yeah. is because most people that own these companies just aren't in your tax bracket. Mm. Let's just keep it real. Yeah. You have doctor offices, you have rehabilitation clinics, you have hospitals, you have everything, ambulances, companies, all this. 
these people, it's not one company that owns everything. Yeah. So the people that typically own these companies don't just, just aren't in your tax bracket. They aren't in your friend group. Yeah. So because of that, I'm here today to be able to let people know you don't have to have a degree. Mm. You don't have to have any medical um, background, mm. and you can own multiple and different type of home health care companies, ambulance companies, doctor offices. It's almost kind of like this. I have the information that can actually get you to where you need to be at, and you don't have to have, like I said, any of those type of backgrounds and things like this. But to start my story, y'all, I always tell people, an entrepreneur, uh, uh, to be an entrepreneur today, you ever heard the term that it takes a village to raise a kid? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It takes a village to raise an entrepreneur. That's let's a fact, let's just be yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. So because when I say it takes a village to be an entrepreneur, the person, the people we are today is because of our past experiences mm -hmm. and the choices we've made. Mm -hmm. My past experience start way back in the day. When I was younger, I used to sell CDs in the seventh grade. Oh, facts. Yeah, well, but, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. but that was me being an entrepreneur. Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to sell candy back when I was in middle school. Yeah. That's me being an entrepreneur. Yeah. I used to cut grass when I was in high school. And I had my friends literally working for me. Mm. So I was always built to be my own boss. Yeah. When I was in high school, I said, you know what? You know how you do like the um, career day, what you want to do and mm -hmm. things like this. I knew that I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. So what I ended up doing was I ended up um, going to college to be, um, I got my degree in healthcare administration. Mm -hmm. The reason why I chose that, because back in the day, I used to be in the boys and girls club. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have a little. Mm -hmm. So just having that, that nurturing um, passion inside of myself, my mom was a nurse, my uncle was a doctor, so I always see that helping people, even cutting people grass, like seeing people come outside and just being happy with the work that you've done, it, that ignites a fire inside of me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take it to a next level, and I wanted to be able to help people. When, in, in healthcare, typically most people don't need help until it's too late. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wanted to give people a way out before then. Mm. So that's why I wanted to get into healthcare because it's a lot of people in healthcare that just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a person that's actually passionate and care. So that's why I chose to get into the healthcare field to actually make changes in this world. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to college. I didn't graduate until I was 27. Mm -hmm. um, I got my, finally got my healthcare degree. When I got my healthcare degree, between that time when I was in high school and college, I was a tattoo artist. Mm. Um, when I was in high school at 18, I end up going and did my um I did my intern as a tattoo artist. So mm -hmm. I've never had a real job. Okay. I've okay. never had a W two. So you went from tattoo to healthcare. Yeah, okay. I went to tattoo okay. from healthcare. So, okay. but the reason was because you know I love being able to serve my people. Yeah. And and down and deep down inside, that's what it really comes down to being. But where does that come from though? Because you because you 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 you're, you're passionate, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I can see that passion, right? I see the passion. I feel the passion. I hear the passion. But this, there's a, you know, this inside the vault. So I yeah. need to get, I need to okay. get deeper, right? There's a deeper layer. I'll give you a prime example, right? Uh, when I was a banker, uh, I, I used to go and 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 volunteer in the jails, right? And okay. talk to young boys in jail because why? Because I almost went to jail. I used to visit my friends in jail, and I said, yo, I made it out, yeah. right? And I said, yo, now that I'm in a position. Let me go give back because I kind of feel like I owe, right? And yeah. so now when I go to inner city schools, when I like that's me saying, yo, I am the successful guy who beat the odds and now let me go help somebody beat the odds. So my passion for young boys, from young girls that are in the inner city is because I know that if you get the right mentorship, if you get the right people to, 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 to pour into you, yeah. that you could be Ash Cash. You could be the next whoever. You could be a legend who never sold drugs, who never went to jail. Yeah. Right, you could be that if you got the right thing. So that's my passion, yeah. and, and 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 there's something in there, Gooch. I, so, that's what I want. Okay, I want all that. All right, so, so we're gonna get a little bit deeper. Please, right, so, let's so, go. So my passion actually comes from back when I was younger. My grandmother, she had a stroke. Mm. She had multiple strokes, and she ended up passing. Yeah. Um. So what ended up happening back then? Just seeing her life deteriorate mm. in front of us. Yeah. Seeing my family have to scramble and get a nurse to be able to come in yeah. and come inside the home and help her, and seeing how my family didn't have the money to pay for mm. these type of services and then having a nurse actually come in that wasn't the best nurse because mm -hmm. the company she worked for just didn't care about her quality of work. Yeah. Coming in seeing those type of things, coming in seeing my mom and hearing my mom talk about the hospital and the patients yeah. and how some of the doctors and things just don't care about their jobs. Yeah. That's what really ignited a passion for me because yeah. at the end of the day, 
it's either you're going to change the world or you or you might leave somebody else to change the world that don't care yeah, about yeah. changing mm -hmm. the world. So, so I seen this at the end of the day. I know for sure that I care. Yeah. So that passion comes from seeing my family yeah. and seeing friends and yeah. seeing people in the hospital literally deteriorate, deteriorate and not have people around them that actually care. Yeah. So seeing that physically and really losing my grandma really made a change in my life because I lost her back when I had to be about 14 years mm -hmm. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, is when we buried my grandma. Wow. Um, my mom have arthritis. Just mm. seeing that back when I was young, I used to have to give her a shot. Mm. Um, I had to give my mom a shot. Um, I forgot what the name of the shot was, but I just had to give her a shot so she could walk, so she could go to work and things wow, like this. Wow. So I've always been surrounded in the healthcare field in yeah, general. Yeah. So that passion to help comes from seeing people around me deteriorate. Yeah. My grandparents died from cancer, my uncles died, I had two uncles that died from cancer. Yeah. Seeing these people deteriorate inside of the home yeah. and knowing that if I could have at that time been who I was today back then, mm -hmm. put somebody inside of their home to make it easier on their family and make it easier on them because at the end of the day, you know, we love our loved ones, but it's different when you have somebody inside of the home there for eight to 12 hours and their only job is to tend to this person mm -hmm. is a very big difference Absolutely. from yeah. somebody else that's, you know, caring for a family member. We love them, but at the end of the day, like I said, you have somebody there that's paid to be there to only care about them and their well-being. Yes. So knowing and seeing people around me pass away or have a lifestyle that is not in the best because they have cancer and on chemo and things, just knowing that I can have somebody come in and change their life, yeah. that's where my passion come right. in at. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we live in a world where people just don't care anymore. Yeah. I'm one of those individuals, if you can hear it, when I talk, people can feel the passion Absolutely. come out of me. Yeah. And that's where it comes from, yeah. just knowing that I can, you have two different people in the world. You have people that can help, yeah. and you have people that can help and do nothing about it. Yeah. I'm yeah. a person that can actually help, and that's what I'm doing. And yeah. I built an empire off of me being able to help people. I don't care about the money. Yeah. I don't care about the cars. I don't care about the clothes. I don't care about the mansions. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff matters to me. Yeah. What matters to me is changing the people's lives around me. Yeah. That's where my passion come in. The fruits of my labor yeah. just happen to be these things. But if I lost it all right now, yeah. as long as I still can help people, yeah. that's where it come from. And yeah. doing what I do, actually physically help people, and I love what I do. Hey listen, it's Ash Cash, and I wanna get straight to the point. If you wanna change your money mindset so you can live your best financial life, then check out Mind Right Money Academy, the greatest money mindset financial education platform in existence. With Mind Right Money Academy, you'll get access to online programs that help build your money mindset first and foremost, but you'll also get practical tips on credit, starting a thriving business, learning the basics of investing, real estate, life insurance, estate planning, social media marketing, book writing, and so much more. We even have programs that help you manage your money as a family, how to thrive in your nine to five if you have one, or how to diversify your income as an entrepreneur. You'll hear from some of my millionaire friends on how they got to where they are with actionable steps on how you can implement what they did in your life. And we'll have weekly coaching calls on different topics that will help you get to the next level. You'll get access to our members only group so you can find accountability partners and build your money team. You'll get discounts to premium content and live events. We even have a book club with assigned readings and discussions each month. We'll also give you access to Mind Right Radio, the VIP section, which is our 24 seven inspirational radio station. So I wanna give you this special invitation to help grow your wealth consciousness and ultimately your wealth. So make sure you go to mindrightmoneyacademy.com. It's free for seven days, so you have no excuse. Check it out. And if you like it, then it's $47 per month, and you can cancel any time, but I promise you, you'll get so much value that you won't even fathom the thought. So head over there now, mindrightmoneyacademy.com, and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. So is that what you look for? No, no, no that's, okay. that's exactly <laughs> it. And so um, how did you get into... Um, you know, healthcare to, to what you were doing. So you're, you're a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, sort of like, where did the idea come from to say, you know what, I'm gonna start a home healthcare business. So it's so funny. So back when I was a tattoo artist, back when I say, I graduated when I was 27, back when I was about 25, one of my best friends, 
he ended up owning like um, private care homes. Mm -hmm. So he had individuals inside of the homes that had like mental disabilities and they literally lived inside of an actual home and had like a CNA taking care of them. Mm -hmm. So he was doing it, he was making great money. Like I said, he went from driving like an old like Camaro mm -hmm. to next thing you know, he got this $120,000 Fisker standing a half nice, a million nice. dollar um, condo right. called the Atlantic over yeah. the Atlantic States. I said, yeah. all right, well, something, I, I got to get into this. Right, right. But what we've come to know is, you know, sometimes being a mom and pop company sometimes hurts us. So what ended up happening was the state came down on all the smaller companies like mm -hmm. his and started trying to close them down. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you know what, I got to get out of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So he ended up finding the program that we're in now, which is private duty nursing. Mm -hmm. So he got into it. So like I said, he already had a nice lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, he went to buying a McLaren, Ooh. his wife buying a Rolls Royce, yeah. all these different things, taking yeah. all these trips. And I'm like, you know what, I'm about to get ready to graduate. <laughs> right, right, right. Let me go ahead and, and, you know, just pick your brain. So he was like, you know what, Jonathan, this is going to change your life. Mm. I was like, yeah, whatever. It took me about a year. And then uh, right before I graduated, I ended up um, submitting my paperwork mm. to actually get the license. Because for what we do, you know, you have to submit paperwork and things like this. Yeah. So I submitted my paperwork and then I ended up getting my license maybe like two years, I mean, my bad, my bad, like two or three months after I graduated. Yeah. And then from that point, you know, that's what literally changed my life mm. right then and there. But my friend is the one that actually taught me. He mentored me. And that's mm. why I know that having a great mentor mm. in what I do and yeah. what you do, yeah. it like literally makes the difference. Because sure. if I had to do it by myself, I wouldn't even been able to even do the paperwork. Yeah. I wouldn't even know where to start. And inside of my course now, Everybody that I talk to, they literally say the same thing. They literally say, you know what? I don't know where to start. Mm. Like, I, where do I start? You know, how do I even own a business like yeah. this? Yeah. And I look at what I do as, do you remember how real estate used to be before 2008? Mm -hmm. If you used to flip, to flip a house mm -hmm. or to make money doing real estate wholesale, mm -hmm. you thought that you had to have a real estate, real estate license. license. Yeah, yeah. In today's world, we know that's not true. That's not true yeah. So that's the same thing with health, with healthcare. I'm on the forefront of teaching our young brothers mm -hmm. and our young sisters that you can own these type of companies and yeah. you don't have to have a degree. Yeah. You don't have to have a medical background. I have a degree and my degree did not help me not once ever. Yeah. I've never been inside of a meeting and the doctors or the nurses come and say, do you have a degree? My degree taught me nothing about the healthcare field and yeah. what I do. Yeah. So, and just to give you a little touch, a lot of my meetings and stuff that I have mm -hmm. are in front of, I'm literally sitting in the meeting next to people that went to school for 12 to 15 years, yeah. nurse practitioners, and it's literally a team of eight or nine of them mm -hmm me by myself and we're figuring out how to get this kid that's sick home mm. and, and it's literally them talking to me and facilitating their health care and in my mind I'm just like this is amazing yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. this young buck from College Park yeah. that was a tattoo artist yeah. is literally sitting here changing this one individual's life yeah. and I have all these people with all these degrees all this stuff going on and they're listening to every word that I have to say yeah. which is life changing yeah. Yeah. so you know that that's like what some of my passions with uh, some of what I do come from yeah and so like you know uh, uh, one, one of one of the books that I love uh, is the science of getting rich right and the science mm -hmm. of getting rich talks about um, you know, extreme altruism, right? Where like there are people who are like, well, you know, I love to give back. I love to give back. But uh, in order to have a balanced life, you want to be able to, uh, you know, to give, but you also want to be able to receive. You also mm -hmm. want to have good mental health. Like there's like this balance. Um, and so, you know, I hear the passion of, of the give back. Um, but once you started the business, um, and for, for those who are interested in the business, um, you know, what, what, what did it, 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 you know, replace the nine to five, you made 60 grand your first so, year? Yeah, so, so this is how I replaced my business. Yeah. Um, I literally, when I first started business, I had about $14,000 in my bank account. Yeah. And what I did, I said, you know what, the first year of my business, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to sacrifice everything into this business that yeah. I have. Um, I had my friend that was kind of coaching me, so that was a great thing, but, you know, he gave me the blueprint. Yeah. Um, and that's why I actually named mine, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, the blueprint. Yeah. So at the end of the day, he helped me in the beginning. But once I made that decision to actually give it my all yeah. and put everything that I have into it, that's what ended up happening. So my whole first year, I gave up. Um, I gave up drinking. Mm. I gave up going out with my friends. Mm. I gave up, you know, just I had a girlfriend at the time. Me and her ended up breaking up mm. because I seen my vision and I mm. seen my passion and mm. I had to literally dedicate myself to what I'm what I was actually doing. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time, you know, and this has to come down to like being like, you know, a mentor and taking on mentors. Yeah. I was looking at it as of sometimes you have people who are great at doing what they do. Yeah. 
Then you have mentors. Those are two totally different people. So you look at a real estate agent that makes hundreds of million dollars a year, but that don't mean he can teach you how to actually do what he do. Yeah. It might be an individual that might make a million dollars a year, and he's a better teacher than actually the person that actually makes the hundred million dollars at the you know at the end of the day. So yeah. you know that was one of the things. That's why I love what I do because I'm actually one of the people that can actually teach. Mm -hmm. So you know going back to you know the original question. So when I gave up that year of my life, mm -hmm. dedicating all of my time, all of my resources um, into doing it, I end up making a million dollars my first year. First year made a million dollars. <laughs> so so all right so. One million dollars, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 first year. but there's a but. Okay. And I lost six hundred thousand of that okay. million dollars okay. that I made. Okay. How'd you lose six hundred thousand? But so let me get into so what I'm happening with. So I, when I end up starting my company, you know what I do is I take on patience. I'm just a middleman. Yeah. So what I do is I have patience, and then I connect them with nurses, CNAs, and LPNs. Mm -hmm. So I just take a cut of whenever the nurse is at the patient's home. Mm, okay. So essentially what I was doing was I end up taking on about 30, 35 patients within mm. one month's time mm. after three months of me opening up. Mm -hmm. What that did was that skyrocketed my income from making like around five or $7,000 um, a month up to $100,000 a month, $100,000 mm. plus a month. Right. But, and I tell people this, at the end of the day, you have to have policies and procedures and you mm. have to have an infrastructure because I was making all this money, mm. but I was making all these mistakes. Mm. I had staff that was counseling on me last mm. minute. Um, I had people that was doing like billing and things like that, and I'm going back checking, and they just didn't have their paperwork right. Mm. So at the end of the day, I made all this money, but I made all these mistakes. I didn't have a good accountant. Yeah, that's why I tell people. So you know, people want to start these businesses, yeah. and they don't they don't actually know the premise of how to start a business. That's yeah. why I say take on a mentor. Yeah, like somebody like you, you're gonna teach somebody how to actually build their company Absolutely. and do what they do from the ground up the right way yeah and that's what I do too so I tell people now like you know get yourself a good accountant because I end up having to come back and pay like almost close to two hundred thousand yeah. dollars in taxes mm. because th my mindset was you know what once I start making a certain amount of money yeah. then that's when I'm gonna get an account right then that's when I'm gonna start oh, getting good. a flow yeah, sheet yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna start worrying about this yeah. that's how most individuals get yeah. themselves in IRS trouble yeah. because in their mind they're like when I, I'm not gonna get an accountant when I first start my company mm. yeah. I'm gonna get one once I start making a certain amount of money but by the time you start making that certain amount of money you're already pretty much already too late. Yeah. You've already filed your company like an LLC or an S Corp. Yeah. And you, most people don't even know which one they actually Absolutely. even need to file. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you have to lay down the groundwork and the framework and build mm. on top of that. I basically mm. built my empire on sand mm. and it was bound to fall. Yeah, yeah. It was going to happen and yeah. it did fall. I almost lost my company. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, I had to come back and I literally had to almost start from scratch. Mm. I had to lose clients. I literally yeah. had to make a decision to myself and say, you know, Know what what I've built it, it, it like I'm hurting people mm. and I had to make a choice to, to send all these clients to other companies mm. and restart and rebuild my company from mm. the ground up and one thing about it that's what we have to understand it's built in some people mm. if I lost if I start losing everything today one of the things that I would do is I would sell everything I have and go live with my mom mm. because you know my pride and stuff is not in the way yeah, yeah because some people what they'll do is they'll be like if they start losing everything that they have yeah. they start rushing to try to make ways of trying to just make more money or things like this but at the end of the day sometimes you just have to stop where you're at and restart mm. before you lose everything and once you start losing everything you get to that point of no return mm -hmm. now you're just trying to keep up a lifestyle where you could have stopped way before then mm -hmm. and went and cut all your your losses and started over that's what I did I cut all my losses mm -hmm. and even to even get inside this company when I first submitted my paperwork I actually got denied because I didn't have the right insurance mm -hmm. so that hurt me so in me being hurt in that way I know that I had a decision to make back then either I'm going to do what I love and I'm going to keep going or I'm going to go a different route and I chose to stay in what I and stay to what I did and I chose the route that I actually did because I couldn't have left it alone I wouldn't be sitting here right here right, with you right, right now right. but I stayed in what I actually did and now I'm here today and I and I, I want to unpack that man and, and, I, and I appreciate your transparency I thank you for, for saying that because I think that a lot of times uh, especially in this in this Instagram uh, entrepreneurship you know uh, world where there's this glorification like yo I'm an entrepreneur yo I'm doing big things um you know you know I know there's a lot of people who say yo I made a million dollars I made yeah. this money 
but how much you know how much did you actually keep um, <laughs> yeah. so i love i love the fact that you're you're transparent about yo i made a million dollars but i also made a million a million mistakes too yeah. you know what i'm saying which almost cost me my business um and so you know that 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 was that was refreshing right because mm -hmm. um a lot of people are only showing uh, their wins right yeah. they're not showing uh, the pitfalls they're not showing the late nights they're not showing the sacrifice like you said yeah. you got rid of friends you got rid of man your girlfriend you know what i'm saying you got rid of yeah. everything you kind of just started you know from this space um and so you know and, and so if i understand uh, understand you correctly right is like uh, you run a home health care business, and it's really like you, like you said, you're, you're the middle middle person where yeah. you you know you know similar to like real estate, right? You mentioned real estate where like wholesaling, um, where the the what what a wholesaler does is they're the middle person between yeah. a buyer and a seller. Yeah. They find somebody who want to sell their home, they find somebody who want to buy their home, mm -hmm. they put a little bit on top of that, and then yeah. you know, and and then they connect the two, and then they keep the difference, right? Yeah. And, 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 and in fact, it's similar to that, right? Yeah. You have, you know, patients that need home, who, who need care. You have companies that provide the care. Yeah. You bridge the gap between the two, and then you add money for being the connector. Is yeah. that, is that but, correct? But a, a little bit. Based on what you said is true, yeah. except for the company part, I am the company mm. that provide the care. Yeah. My company actually, I actually hire the nurses mm. and things like that. Because yeah. back, this is what I want to do. Back in the day, I looked at it like this. Today's world, most people make money through social media, mm -hmm. Facebook, and marketing ads and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the reasons I actually got into what I do now and why I love when my friend brought this to me. Because at the end of the day, I, I don't care about social media. Mm -hmm. I don't care about Facebook, Instagram. I didn't care about having a social media presence. I make money without social media, mm. and that's powerful to yeah. me. I've been sitting in rooms with individuals that make millions of dollars, and a lot of their conversations literally be, how can we make money if tomorrow I wake up and people don't like me? Mm. So I wanted, I built my company around yeah, not making yeah, yeah, money yeah, yeah, yeah. through social media because yeah. today's world, everything that you do have to do with so, making money on social media. Right. I don't care. I wake up like, you know, anything that happened with social media, mm. I don't care if people don't like me. Yeah. Day, I'm behind the scenes. Yeah. So that's what I love about what I do. Yeah. And my company is great for people that don't want a big social media presence, that yeah. don't really care about getting out. A lot of my marketing and tools like that that I use mm -hmm. are more in person, being human, being kind. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hold charity events. These mm -hmm. are the passions and stuff that I love. So when I even get down to marketing, a lot of my marketing to these doctor offices and rehabilitation clinics are in-person type mm -hmm. meetings. Yeah, yeah. They don't care about my social media presence. Yeah. They don't care if I have a million followers or mm -hmm. one follower. Yeah. They only care that I'm able to help their patients. Yeah. So with what you said, like I said, I'm the, just the middleman. I've learned in the world today, and these are just things I've learned, being the middleman mm -hmm. is actually That's being position. better than sometimes the person that actually produced yeah, the item absolutely. or the person actually collecting the item. Yeah. You look at Uber, they don't own one car, right. but they are multi-billion dollar if not trillion dollar company yeah being the middleman is always easier than actually being on either side of right the spectrum. airbnb airbnb don't own not one condo yep. not anything but they just facilitate so what yeah. i do is i go out to the i mean i go out to the employees and i hire them up under my company whether like i said they're a registered nurse lpn and cna then I go to the individuals that actually need help. And my marketing strategy is actually amazing. I tell people this in marketing. Um, sometimes marketing can be just this big, to me it's like this, I, I got a marketing team now, and I, they be telling me stuff, I be like, look, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I'm so used, because I'm used to this right here, I'm used to putting myself in the headspace of the person that needs help. Mm. So in my business, I look at it like this. When I market, because people say, how did you get all these clients? because I put myself in the actual space of a mother or a father or an individual that needs help. I say, look, if I have a son that has cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. um, and cerebral palsy is something where if you see most individuals, the kids, like, you know, they're non-ambulatory, which means they cannot walk, they cannot talk and things like this. If I have a loved one that's this type of individual, what does their daily life look like? Mm -hmm. Their daily life look like things like they might go to school, but they're gonna have a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, on the weekend, what are they gonna do? They're most likely gonna be with some type of charity event or something like that in that term. So I put myself saying, if I had that son, like, you know, what charity event would I take him to? What are the things I did? And I went and targeted those type of facilities. Mm. What kind of doctor office would this child go to? You know, what type of surgeries would this child have? 
and I went and targeted those places as of an in-person meeting. So I went there physically and you got places like this that have gatekeepers. Mm. So these are things that I teach in my course because yeah. at the end of the day, like I said, marketing for what I do is different from everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So I went to these places. I would like bring flyers and leave stuff and they'll be like, yeah, we'll give it to the doctors. Never heard back from them. Yeah. Then I started shooting a couple of more questions. I'm like, all right, so you know, who actually gives out the referrals of things? And they're mm. like, oh, it's this person. Then I would talk to that person. I'd be like, well, can I have a meeting with your whole staff? Mm. Then I start creating lunch and learns. Mm. Well, now I'm sitting in front of a meeting where it's five doctors, 15 nurses, their whole staff, and I'm giving them lunch. Mm. And now they're literally listening to everything I have to say. Mm -hmm. No social media, yep. nothing like that. This yeah. is for an individual like me that don't like being in front of the camera, yeah. even though you got me in front of the camera right now, but don't like being in front right, of the right, camera. Right, right. But like, so this is, so I, that's what I love. Yeah. And now I'm sitting, now me, this young child yeah. that doesn't have all these degrees is talking to a doctor and I'm letting them know that I have a service yeah. that can help your people. Yeah. And they would eat it up. They would love it. Like they could feel my passion. They're asking me all these questions. And, and sometimes I've, I've read up on so much that a lot of these meetings, they'll ask me, are you a doctor? They're like, or are you a nurse? Like, what kind of background? Right, and I right, tell right. them, and then they'll be like, oh my God, that's that's crazy. But one of the things I like, to, and I'm going to tell a lot of you guys this too, one of the things that got me to where I am today is when I actually had these meetings, mm -hmm. I never let them know I was the owner of the company. Oh, okay. Do, so, okay. So, so do you know the reason why I did that? Nah, I, 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 I could guess, but please tell them why. So, so one of the reasons is because, I, I give you a couple of reasons. One of the main reasons is if you know I actually own the company, Yeah. If I do something wrong where you have a problem with me, mm. the way that you interact with how you're going to take care of that is different versus if you think I work for the company. Mm. So let's say, let's say if you know I own my company, right? Yeah. You get into it with me. Yeah. You're going to try to get my whole company shut down. Yeah. If, if, if you think that I'm just an employee and I have some a manager and a manager's manager and a director, yeah. if you get into it with me, guess what you're going to do now? You're mm. just going to try to get in touch with my manager. Right. So, mm. so when I went to those meetings, yeah. I never wanted them to know that I actually own a company because of the color of my skin and I'm yeah. in a meeting full of those type of people. Yeah. If, they, if they know that I own the company, yeah. then they would look at me differently and if, they may if, not actually give it. If they, if they knew that you own the company and you making more money than yeah. they are with a doctor's degree, <laughs> then, then that's, all, that's a whole things, different story. It's so funny real. because, um, I mean, it just is what it is because I remember... Man, I wish I remembered the, the gentleman's name, but back in the day, there was a successful company uh, that was owned by a black man, and he was in, I think he was in the hotel business. He was in something, but he, uh, you know, you know, he served predominantly. Um, man, it was it was actually in the in the uh, uh, the C.J. Madam Walker movie, I believe. Okay. But he, you know, he predominantly served other people. Um, you know, other ethnicities, mm -hmm. um, and he, ne you know, his, he had hunt all these employees, and everybody loved him, and he yeah. never really showed his face. It was the moment where he wanted to 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 recognize all his employees. He did this workshop or this big conference, and majority of his, uh, you know, the people who were his his employees were like, you know, of different ethnicities, mm -hmm. and when they saw that he was the owner. They just straight sabotaged the business. He yeah. lost everything. So that that that's interesting. That this this had to be in the early 1900s. You talking a hundred years later? That is you know still uh, wh whether it's the case or the concern, it's still yeah. something that's really real. No, you know? like in the, in the space and field that we're in, yeah. healthcare is different from anything else. Like. And we know that because look at what happened with COVID. Yeah. Most people don't pay attention to their health care until it's too late. Absolutely. But when COVID hit, COVID literally yeah. stopped the world from moving. Absolutely. It was one of the worst times that we've ever had. Yeah. But it let people know that that healthcare actually means something Absolutely. in today's world. Yeah. So what it also did was it started shifting being in what we call like skilled nursing facilities, yeah. what are like, which when we say skilled nursing facilities, which include like nursing homes and hospitals and rehabilitation clinics, mm -hmm. into actually being in home healthcare. Yeah. You start seeing telemedicine. These mm -hmm. doctors and all these companies start noticing like, wait, we can provide the same, the same level of care as being in a hospital inside the home, mm -hmm. and it costs us one tenth right. of the price. Right. So as of right now, healthcare is literally switching to being in home. Mm -hmm. And with the company and the licenses that I have and the yeah. licenses that I teach people how to get, yeah. it, it, it opens. So when people think of in-home health care, like I said, it's more than just providing nursing care for elderly yeah. and individuals that need it. 
I help somebody open up a company mm. where what they do is they work for the insurance company. Mm. Um, what am I about? They contract with the insurance company because they have the license to be able to pull blood and do phlebotomy inside the home. Mm. So when people want life insurance, the nurse literally goes out and pulls the blood and drops it off um, at the hospital, mm. and that person actually gets paid for that. Mm. So her company, she has the same license that I have. I helped her open up her company. Mm -hmm. She went through my mentorship, and what she did was she said, you know what, I don't really want to provide in-home health care mm -hmm. in the sense where I have an individual sitting inside of the home helping somebody that cannot help themselves. I want to change it a little bit. So with her license, she was able to actually get a contract with the insurance company just to go pull blood mm. and then drop it off at the hospital or at the clinic, and then she gets paid per patient. Mm. Once you get my type of license, also, like, I'm just getting my certification to provide COVID-19 vaccinations. Mm. That's deep. That's yeah. the, so I'm this young brother, right, 31 right. years and, old. I was going to say, how young? 31 years 31 old. 31 years old. Yes. And, and, and when you look at all the COVID vaccination sites and things, they're yeah. run by CVS. They're run by Walgreens, yeah. Walmart. Yeah. And now you have this young brother yeah. that's 31 years old, Legend. barely graduated from college, yeah. competing with these major companies. Mm. Because, like I said, these major companies, the reason is because people don't know that you can own this type of company. Yeah. But knowledge yeah. is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Knowledge is, the, the, the yeah. reason, and people always ask, they're like, you know, why do so many people go to college? Why is this? And I tell people knowledge is key. The knowledge of our parents not knowing of how to be an entrepreneur because yeah. they was taught is that when you're, I'm pretty sure if you ask your mom or dad, you know, how do you be successful? What's successful? Mm. Going to college, right. getting a Get degree, a working a job, yeah. working for somebody else. That's yeah. all that that's they knew. knew. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. in today's world, we know that's not true. Yeah. In today's world, people think that to be in healthcare, you have to have a degree, you have to have this. Yeah. But that's not true. And and so and so what so so what is what is the uh, what is the barrier to entry? So now. You know, I'm a I'm a young guy. You know, I'm probably in my 20s, I'm trying to figure things out. Uh, I love everything that you're saying. I love helping people. I want to start this business. I want to get the licenses. Um, is this a, one of those businesses where I gotta have fourteen thousand dollars saved up to no. start the business, or you know, what what is the barrier to entry, or is it is there no barrier to entry? Is it just really like you know what? Hit you know like 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 what what are some of some of the costs that it may take to you know to jump into this business? So so the first of all the barrier to entry is just knowledge. Mm. It's educating yourself. One thing that I've always learned is you can tell me a way to make money, and for me being a smart individual, I'm gonna go research it myself mm -hmm. before I actually take before I just instead of so you know you get these people out here who want into the healthcare field, they want into whatever they're doing. Or whatever they, um, you know, whatever they want to do, and they take on these mentors, but they never actually do the research that they, their self. Yeah. So I tell people right now, if you want in on what I do, yeah, you can easily just go to your state website, mm. and you can look up private duty nursing mm. or home health care, mm. uh, or home health care permit, mm. and it's going to give you all the information that you need. Mm. So that's one of the barriers. And when it comes down to actually like the money wise, mm. most of the time to get your license, it only costs around a thousand to two or three thousand dollars for your actual license and you just have to do the paperwork yourself mm. so some of the costs that you're gonna um some of the costs you're gonna have you're gonna have to get insurance mm. you're gonna have to get general professional liability insurance mm. and you're gonna have to get workers comp for a new company that's somewhere probably like around five hundred to a thousand dollars a month mm. you're gonna have to pay for your license which can be from a thousand dollars up to like two or three thousand mm -hmm. dollars in certain states like Florida so what my company do I help people all over the country open up their companies that's yeah. where my mentorship come in yeah. that's where my course come in so I know information like in Florida sometimes um, depending on which license you want you have to have hundred fifty thousand dollars in your bank account mm -hmm. so before before when you apply for your license but when people hear that, they're like, man, I got to have $150,000. That's a, that's a lot to have in your bank account. Right. Some people see that as a way of being like unattainable. Mm. What I see that is that's them keeping out the riffraff. Mm, yeah. so, so now when I actually get my license, once I'm able to attain that money and things, now mm. I'm here to stay because when people see things that are hard, they typically turn away. Right. When I see things that are hard, I look at, man, that's going to stop a lot of other people Absolutely. that shouldn't be in this exactly. field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Florida's one of those only states where yeah. you have to have that amount of money to actually get a certain permit. You mm. still can get other permits mm. actually inside of the state that do health care. Yeah. and not have to have that type of money. So one of the plays that I actually teach in my course yeah. and one of the plays I'm going to give you is owning a nanny service. In most states, 
Only a nanny service operates like a home health care service. Mm -hmm. You're the middleman. Mm -hmm. You have somebody that needs help, that needs care for somebody that they love, mm -hmm. and you have the staff. All you're doing is connecting. That sounds just like home health care. Yeah. You have an individual that needs care for their loved one, mm -hmm. and you have staff, which is a nurse and CNA. Mm -hmm. You just make a little bit of money off of the top. So I'm going to give you like one of my cases. So right now, I have a case where I have an individual, he's really sick, he's trach invented, mm -hmm. um, and I have a nurse that go out and take care of him. The state pays me like $45 an hour. I pay my actual registered nurse $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. So I make $20 an hour off of this case. This case, I bill at 56 hours a week. Mm. So I, what, what, is, what is that number? Anybody know what that so number is? So 56, you're talking times about... Times 20. Times 20, you're talking about 1,000, mm -hmm. that's... Uh, what, 1120? Yeah. All right, so, so, so that's $1,120 $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, that I put in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not what I actually pay her. She's already made her money. Right. I put $1,120 in my pocket mm. every week. Mm -hmm. That ends up being, what, $4,400? Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, that ends up being close to $60,000 right. that I make off of this wow, one case wow. of helping this individual. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm, so the money, that, that's why... These people, that's the ultimate, that, though. And, wow. and that's just one. So yeah, what, yeah, what they've yeah, done yeah, is yeah. that's why they don't want us in this industry because right. they know how much money we actually can make, yeah. and they try to keep it away. So I'm gonna give it to you from the nanny play. Right. And like I said, to own the nanny service in most states, you don't have all you have to do is get your business license, yeah. your insurances, and your EIN number and yeah. your marketing materials, yeah. and create your policies and procedures, which are gonna be your background checks, and get a good accountant yeah, yeah. and CPA. And I stress the fact that you have to have a good accountant and CPA. And not a legal team, but you have to get contracts because you want to start your company off the right way yeah. and not how not how sometimes we like to do, which is let me just get the company up and running and I worry about it, it out, and then figure right. it out. No, start right. it the right way, which might take you a little bit longer. Yeah. And then once you get all that stuff together with your nanny play, yeah. now you go out and go market to daycares. Yeah. You go out to go market to friends. Yeah. And you have to have the marketing materials and things. And when I say that, at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. So if I make, for most nannies, I might charge a family $17 to $20 an hour. Yeah. So I make, then I might pay the nanny $10 to $12 or $13 an hour. I try yeah. to make at least $5 an hour off of each nanny case yeah, that I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with each nanny case, that's $5 an hour. They typically do around 30 to 40 hours a week. So let's just say 40 hours. So that's five times 40. Mm -hmm. What, that's $200. Um, is that right? That's two hundred dollars that I make off that case a week, right? Is that, is that the number here? No, five times forty. That's two hundred, yeah, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's two hundred I make off that case. People are like two hundred dollars. That's not that much. Yeah. Okay, but you, I mean, you look at any direction. There's a mother that has a child that needs a nanny. Absolutely. So that means that that that, that number can grow. So now, let's say if I have ten of these cases, yeah, yeah. Then it's I'm 2, making 000. two hundred. Now that's two thousand dollars, and I'm yeah. managing ten cases. Yeah. But let's take that number, and I say I have thirty or forty cases, which is easily. Mm -hmm attainable yeah. in this market now I'm making eight thousand right, dollars a week right, right. off of, and that's a week off that's of a week. Just, right, 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 and that's right. just off of attaining that so yeah. what I love and, and what I love to do is um, in the field that I work healthcare you can expand so many different ways yeah. and that's why I love what I do because yeah. that's why when people get into it they yeah. love it and then that's why most people that's in healthcare they own like an ambulance company yeah. they own like a, a healthcare marketing company they own a nursing agency so with an individual that's trying to start, if you really want to get into what I do, you can start with the nanny play. So mm -hmm. what I forgot to tell you was, when I was actually getting my license and things, I actually opened up a nanny agency. Mm -hmm. And I still actually have my nanny agency. And I was making $15,000 a month mm -hmm. off my nanny agency in between that time of when I actually um, got my Medicaid number and when I first actually like, like started getting my paperwork and stuff together. Yeah. So with that, and to open up the nanny play, it only costs you maybe like, what two or three thousand dollars that's mm -hmm. not even all upfront money yeah yeah so for an individual that wants to start and actually get into that that's all that's all the money you know i kind of yeah. already broke it down but to get in the healthcare part um i would say just in general it probably costs you like around with insurance probably like around five to ten mm -hmm. dollars so, like i said i had fifteen thousand not fourteen thousand dollars when i first started mine yeah. Yeah. so you know and that's well and thing you know that's what paying for everything that yeah. you need to be able to get so that's why I have my course and that's why I actually have my mentorship because, you know, you can pay us and we do all the paperwork for you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you have and, some and, people that want that. And I, and I love that and I really uh, want everybody listening to really take heed to that uh, because when you think about, like, like he, yo, he, drop, he dropping a lot of game. He's giving us, um, you, know, you know, from a, from a high level. But if you kind of look at 
um, you know, what he's actually saying to be able to generate a million dollars, right? So a couple of things I want y'all to understand is to be able to generate a million dollars uh, in one year of this business and, you know, the, the, the amount of money that he had to put up up front, it doesn't even compare, right? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't even compare. It is an investment that's worth, worthwhile, uh, but it's also, uh, you know, you know, one of those things where he made the mistakes already for you, right? And so I, I know a lot of people lot of- uh, who are watching this show are actually like like nurses, right? You you might be a nurse right now. You might be you know you know trying to go to school to be a nurse, or you might right you might you might know somebody who needs healthcare, and so this is definitely. Um, a different type of business. Um, you know, I know a lot of the people that we bring, it's, it's usually about personality, how many followers, building funnels and things of that nature. But this is like a real business that really is never going anywhere. That mm-hmm. is an essential business that could really change the trajectory of your life. And so, you know, speaking of trajectories of your life, right, yeah. I do want to, you know, tap in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because we are inside the vault. So we I want to tap into, into uh, some, of, some, of, some of like your money plays, right? Okay. Um, and so now, you know, a million dollars, You've made your first year, and you know since then you've made multiple millions, yeah. right? Multiple uh-huh. millions, right? And so, uh, young thirty-one-year-old multi-millionaire. Uh, when you think about, uh, your, like, the, like, like your money. Um, first of all, what was the most extravagant thing you've 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 you know used money for, or you've bought with money so far? Buying my mansion. Mm, all right, so you have a mansion. <laughs> yeah, talk to me about this mansion. Uh, so you know, I, one of the things was I'm very big on staying close to the highway, being yeah. able to have availability to the city. Cause like you know, I'm still young. So right. when I get a family, that's when I move an hour away. Right. So you know, I end up buying my mansion in Buckhead. You know, I paid a two million dollar price tag nice, on it. Nice. So the biggest purchase was when I had to sign over that check for yeah. four hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, plus another almost hundred thousand for my closing fees and right, stuff. Right, so right. signing over that check for that, yeah. I was like that. I was like, Look, I seen that one come out of my bank account. <laughs> right, a right, lot right. of things I don't see come out of my bank yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. I seen that one come out of my right, bank account. Right, right. So yeah, so that's probably one of the most extravagant things. And then, you know, like buying the Lamborghini and yeah, stuff like right. that, taking all these expensive trips and private jets with all the friends yeah, and, and things. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's one of the that's one of the biggest things that that I probably purchased was was that and nice. some of those other extravagant nice, things. Nice, nice. And then, uh, what would you say is your most uh, impactful thing you've done with money so far? Um, so every year I donate. I donate hundreds of thousands of dollars a year into charities. Nice. Um, I actually like so some of the people that are actually I care for. Yeah. And you know this is when stuff kind of get deep. I've actually had times where my staff wouldn't show up for work, mm. or you know they'll let me know last minute that they wanted to come to work and things like this. And I actually went out there myself. Oh, wow. To actually go take care of them because I know what the impact of you needing to go to work. And that one day of you missing work, especially with a mother that, you know, is struggling and things like that, I've went out and did that. I've paid people um, rent. Mm. Um, I've helped people buy cars. Mm. I've helped pay electricity bills and things like that. So I hold charity events every year. I've linked with um, MDA, which is Muscular Muscular Dystrophy Association of America. Mm. Um, I'm typically at all their events with a table and I donate a lot of money. I've um, linked with a place called Lecotech that provides like different type of fundamental childcare items. And we do a Halloween party every year and um, a lot of different other charities. So I don't. I love donating money to charities, but I also like donate, seeing where my money is going and helping different individuals. Just like this year, we I was one of the brothers that went to Kroger and donated mm. the forty thousand yeah. um, dollars. I was one of the brothers that went to um, Walmart mm. right in December and donated a hundred thousand mm. dollars to Walmart to everybody yeah. in Walmart. Yeah. So. Having money is great, mm. but if you're not changing people's lives with all the money that you're acquiring, then yeah. like I said, I'm the basic principle. What are you doing in life today? Yeah. Um, and p- don't get it confused. You don't have to be rich to be able to help people. Yeah. If you don't have the money to give, give your time. Mm. If you don't have the time, just be nice. Yeah. I see individuals that literally like they look at people that's not where they are in life or yeah. they look at them as being beneath them, homeless yeah. people, yeah. and they almost spit on them. But being yeah. nice to them, you know, showing them respect, saying, yeah. 
anybody I talk to, I always give them respect, saying, you know, yes, sir, no, sir, yeah. yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Whether they're homeless, whether they're uh, Obama. Yeah. So just being nice and things like that, that, that's where I say that, you know, all the money and the things that I do come into play because yeah. that's just how I'm built. So yeah. I want to say giving back to my community and seeing the joy in people's faces from the money that I've given them and from all the charity events that I do. And that's one thing I say being in healthcare is so fun because you get to see the lives that you touch and yeah. you touch them every day. So I want to say, yeah, that, that's some of the things that I do with my money that, that have changed people's lives. And, and, what, and what, are, what are some, um, you know, you know, growing up, because I'm assuming you didn't grow up rich, right? You didn't grow no. up having a lot of money, right? And so, uh, you know, growing up not having a lot of money uh, and now, you know, you have created financial freedom for yourself. Um, what are some what are some money myths that were dispelled now that you have money, right? Like, you know, I know that, um, you know, coming up, there might have been thoughts about money that you might have had. But mm -hmm. now that you have access to, to abundance, right, financial abundance, um, what are some things that... Um, either shocked you about having money or yeah. or like oh oh okay like 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 oh I knew this or oh this is not true like what are some some things you could probably dispel for it? um so one of, this is one of the things I've seen just with the black culture or any culture that I've noticed is credit is king mm -hmm. and that's a reality back mm -hmm. when I was younger I wish somebody would have taught me of actually how to build my credit mm -hmm. and and show me that you know, you can have a million dollars in a bank account mm. and you still can't go buy a million dollar house, mm. um, you know, in such. Yep. Like yep. the person yep. who has better credit ends up paying less. Yep. And that's one of the things, that's one of the things that I wish I would have known. So some of the myths about having money and then we acquire all of this money and it just sit in our bank account. Mm -hmm. So I had to get out and meet individuals who are investors, meet in people who do Bitcoin investing mm -hmm. and, and wealth building to mm -hmm. actually teach me that, yeah, it's nice that every time you check your bank account, you got $1.7 million yeah, sitting yeah, inside yeah, your yeah, bank yeah, account, but yeah. they're like, it's not, you're not doing anything with it. Right. And people think that one of the biggest myths is people think that you have to make a certain amount of money to mm. invest a certain amount yeah, of money. Yeah, yeah. And that's just not true. Yeah. You know, the thing is, what ends up happening is we think, we take on all these bad, um, what word am I looking for? We, we take on all these bad qualities mm. and, and things that we do mm. because we think that because we're not where we are or want to be in life, yeah. that it doesn't matter. Yeah. But you take those same qualities and once you, you don't suddenly be rich and you become this this money investor right, right, or, or right, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's just not the reality of yeah. it. You take if you couldn't manage making three thousand dollars a month, yeah. how do you go to take ah, to manage three hundred thousand dollars a month? You suddenly yeah. don't become financially literate yeah. overnight. Yeah. So you have to start from the beginning. That's why we have to start with our children. Yes. That's why we have to do things like that with our children. So some of the things that I'm actually working on now is I want to teach financial literacy yeah. to people that's in high school. So versus when we have career day yeah. where they say you got to go to college mm -hmm. I want people to sit here and say I want to own my own doctor office yeah. and that's what I'm working on and that's mm -hmm. what you really don't see like yeah. I said we're worried about you know being able to teach the individual that's 21 years old mm -hmm. how to make money mm -hmm. I want to teach the individual that's 15 years right. old that you don't have to be a doctor you yeah. don't have to be a lawyer to be successful yeah. and that starts with the young generation the, the everybody have their own success story Everybody has their own what is successful. Some people think owning a mansion makes them successful. Yeah. One of the things that, that I've come to come find is, and this is one of, one of the things I say that, that get deep with me, I'm at the point in my life right now where I'm trying to buy happiness mm. and it's not working. Mm. I keep buying things thinking that- That's a that, bar and, and, but that's with a $2 million dollar mansion. And Lamborghini and all that. Yeah. I'm trying to buy happiness and it's not really making mm. me happy. Yeah. So now I got to dig deeper inside of myself yeah. and figure some things out. Yeah, let me own a Lambo, I'll teach you. <laughs> I teach, I teach you anything you need to know about happiness, hey, look, baby. No, Beat that Lambo. But, but, but that's it. But that's the thing. But that's what that's what I I've known. I've yeah. known that you acquire all these things and yeah. it makes you happy. That's a fact. Yeah. I've acquired all these things yeah. and and I, I have my passion for helping people. Yeah. And I keep trying to buy my happiness. Yeah. I keep trying to buy all these things, but yeah. it's still a hole in my heart Absolutely, that's not yeah. being filled. Yeah. 
So now I have to dig deep. And that's one of the things I want to tell people is just because you acquire money doesn't mean that you acquire happiness. Mm. I'm depressed just like the next person. Mm. Yeah, I could get on a jet and fly here. Mm. I do things like that sometimes. But Mm. once I do it, I'm still looking in my mind like Mm. I'm hurt. Yeah. So one of the things I want to tell people is, you know, get your credit right. And don't think because once you get all this money and you acquire all these things that you're going to be happy. Coming from a brother that has all these things, that's living my life and things like this. I'm not happy in that sense, yeah. and I'm trying to buy my happiness, right, and right. I keep buying stuff, and yeah. it's not working. Absolutely. So Absolutely. now I'm building on myself and working right. on things on myself. As yeah. of being a young individual at the height of where I'm at right now, yeah. to be a better person, you always have to change who you are every yeah. day, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. I'm changing who I am every day, but yeah. I, I know that I need to change, yeah. and that's literally what I'm working on yeah. today. So to tell people, like I said, that financial literacy being able to work on who you are, because you have people out here who are talented yeah. but don't have the character to keep them where their talent has taken them. That's why you see all these people, all these athletes and stuff that reach all these limits but yeah. then go broke. Or you have all these entrepreneurs that open up these companies, do great, yeah. and then they staff hate them and they lose their company. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like I said, that's some of the myths that I'm telling people is yeah. not having money don't mean happiness. Mm. You see what happened with, to the um, the Apple CEO, mm. he, billionaire, end up getting cancer, cancer yeah. and passing Absolutely. away. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, that's something I want to drop. And I'm sorry yeah. I got deep. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. I, honestly, though, like I, like, I don't even want to go r- lightning round. We always go lightning round. Um, but that message right there is very important for people to think about, right? Because, um, and then that's why we talk about the foundation. That's why we talk about, you know, you know, like, like I mentioned before, the science of getting rich, where it talks about like charity, but you know, you know, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan, right? Of, um, you know, of Reverend Ike, right? And he talks about, you know, it's good health, uh, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money, right? Mm -hmm. And so money is the last thing. Because you got to have good health. Good health is not just physical. Good health is good mental health, good spiritual health, good, you know, good, good, good uh, mental health, spiritual health and physical health. Right. Then, you know, once you have those things, now you start to tackle the happiness. Once you once you have the, 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 the happiness, then you start to talk about love. You love what you do. Now we talk about love. That's when success come. That's when prosperity come. That's when money comes. And when I say prosperity, success, and money, it could come before then. But if you do it, it's like like you said, you're building the house on sand, right? Yeah. The foundation has to be good health, right? The foundation has to be the the you know good physical health, good mental health, good spiritual health. Because at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is is that when you have good mental health, when you have good physical health, when you good have good spiritual health, when you're standing on something. Something solid, nothing can shake you. Yeah, you know nothing. what I'm saying? And, and I see one of the biggest problems is, and this is my problem right here. Yeah. I have let my success be determined mm. by the people around me mm. versus me deciding what my own success Sheesh. is. So the reason why I say yeah. that is yeah. I have my own problems, I have my own, everybody do. Yeah. We try to put on this persona like we're perfect. Yeah. And one of the things that I try to teach people are we're not perfect. Yeah. It's okay to be hurt. Yeah. It's okay to, to, to know that everything that you're doing, you may not feel a certain type of way. So yeah. at the end of the day, people have to understand that your success is not determined by the people around you. Yeah. We actually look at trying to be successful in other people's eyes versus our own yeah. eyes. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. people right now who make $40,000 a year and in their mind they're more successful than me because yeah. they have less stress on a day to day. They're able to do everything that they love. But to somebody else looking from the outside in, they look at that success as being like, you're not successful. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you successful? Because, you know, he doesn't have this amount of money. He don't drive this type of car. Mm -hmm. But you have people that backpack through Europe. They Mm -hmm. literally take a backpack, they go to country to country, and then they stay with individuals that they don't know. They work minute jobs, but they get to live these extravagant lives. And then you have somebody like me who can go buy a Lamborghini or a Bentley and yeah. pay cash for it yeah. and that person on a day to day has more happiness mm-hmm. than me that's able to have all this because people got to understand once you reach this level of success yeah. it's not easy it's easy to reach this level of success yeah. but it's hard to stay at this level mm-hmm. of success because yeah. of the simple fact that you have I have I pay my mama bills yeah. I have individuals always with their handout yeah. I have individuals that because I am successful in what I do that I should help them be successful yeah. so I have all these things on my back but then you have this other individual who literally backpacked through Europe and don't have a worry in their world and they're more successful in their eyes and in my eyes than yeah. I am. Yeah. So yeah. what I've started what I'm starting to do currently is yeah. stop I'm still I'm I'm stop worrying about everybody else telling me that I'm successful. Yeah. And and in such by a lot of means I am, but 
My success isn't measured by the stuff that I have. Yeah. My success is measured by the lives I've ah, changed. So now what's going on now, I'm starting to kind of pull away from, I love my, I love having all materials. I, do, yeah, I can't yeah. lie about yeah, that. Like yeah, it, sure, it do sure. give me some type of happiness, but yeah. my true happiness, the one that heals my heart is the people that I'm helping. Yeah. And I want to tell people like, don't get into this world of because your friend get a Gucci bag, yeah. that you got to get a Gucci bag to show yeah. that you're successful. None yeah. of that stuff matter. Yeah. Let, and, me, let me, let me, let me, let me leave with you. We leave you with this bar and I look I need y'all right I need y'all to tap, tap into with my guy right so first and foremost he's gonna change your life uh, he's transparent he's giving you everything that you need uh, we got a special offer for you so make sure you go to the vaultcares.com because I care Gooch cares and we go we care about your life we care about you your loved ones um, and so I, you know, I appreciate this brother for even allowing me to offer this to you guys. Uh, so go to thevaultcares.com if you want to really uh, take advantage of everything uh, that uh, you know, you know, Jonathan Gooch has to offer as it relates to teaching you the business, learning the mistakes so you don't have to make them. Literally, seven-figure business in one year if you are willing to put in the work. The knowledge without application is not going to get you there. So I'm going to tell you that first and foremost, if you just want to buy the course just to sit on it, don't even don't even waste your time. If you're looking for mentorship just to hear him talk, don't even waste your time. I need people who are committed, who are dedicated, who are ready to do the work because we are we are we are changing lives, we are saving lives on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm going to leave you with this one bar, right? Um, change what you're after. Yeah. Happiness um, goes away. Because I was in pursuit of happiness too. So I know exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of, like, I have I had a lot of success in my life. Like, yeah. I'm on my fourth life, I'll be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I'm so far ahead of my time. I'm about to start another life. Look around. I'm about to pass you twice. Like, I've done, like, I promise you, I've done a yeah. lot of stuff, right? Um, and I was always in search of happiness. But happiness is attached to something, mm -hmm. right? When you are, like, if my kid gets an A, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. But what if she doesn't, right? Now yeah. I attach my happiness to this thing. If I bought a $2 million house, I'm happy. But when that goes away, what do I have? And so the barometer needs to change, right? Let's, all of us, everybody, let's stop chasing happiness mm -hmm. and start focusing on joy. Yeah. Right? Because I like that. when you enjoy, right, you enjoy what you do. Yeah. You're not happy about helping people. You enjoy happiness, right? And if you flip it, it's enjoy, right? Yeah. Like it's inner. Like that's this this thing that makes that 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 lets your heart sing, that comes from inside. When you when you give a hundred thousand dollars to Walmart, yeah. that came from inside. When you gave a hundred thousand, four hundred and forty thousand dollars at Kroger's, that to watch their faces to see, that was joy. Yeah. Right? And so when you enjoy what you do, when somebody calls out and they gotta get to work and you and you say, yo, I'm gonna fill in, that's joy. And you yeah. control that though. Right? It's controlled by what you do. Yeah. You you decide your joy. And so the goal for us is to stop chasing happiness. Happiness can flee. Am I am I against happiness? No. Right? Mm -hmm. My daughter my daughter gets an A but gets on the honor roll. I'm happy. Yes. But if the joy in me of being her dad, whether she gets an A or not, the joy of me of helping people, whether I get paid for it or not, the joy of me of touching people's lives, like that is, no one could ever take that away from me. I promise you, you, you take every single uh, success story I've had, you take every dollar that I have, you take away my net worth, you take away the wife, the kid, you take away all of that, right? Mm -hmm. I still walk through life happy because the the main thing is that i woke up today and there are people that die every single day and the fact yeah. that i still have life means that i still have the opportunity to help people i still have the opportunity to you know bring joy to people's lives so yeah brother I Look, you need to um, get a, we got to get a new one called the Vault Therapy Session. Oh, man. No, no. I'm man, telling you, like, nah, this. You, you just dropped it, man. Nah. Like, you I, just dropped you, it. You know, you know what it is, man? Like, I've had, um, and, and, and this is what makes this show special to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't take this lightly. This this show is very special to me because you, you never know what you're going to get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even though we have a format and we try to kind of, like, go in a certain order, uh, you never know what you're going to get. Um, and to be able to, that's why this is the greatest money mindset show ever, right? Yeah. Because uh, what we do here is really just kind of like listen, 
um, and to really want to impact people. And I, like, honestly, bro, what you just dropped today mm -hmm. is going to shake up people's lives for the better. Like beyond, like I, I already know this because your transparency and you saying what you said, being a young multimillionaire who's saying, listen, that's, that's not it, right? It's great. But nah, I'm still I'm still trying to figure things out. Like that right there yeah. is going to shatter a lot of myths because I know millions of people out there think that once they get to this level of success, everything gets better, everything gets sweet. And we're looking at a multi-millionaire who has a two million dollar house, who vacations whenever the hell he wants, who has a a, a, a Rolex watch, <laughs> who has Bentley, right? Who has all the material things that we think we want, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's still something that there's in search of, and I and I really want people to take heed that it's it happiness is fleeting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's really about joy. So. Um, man, the vault cares. Listen, <laughs> see what you see. Look, 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 look what we do here. The vault cares.com. Make sure you tap in with, 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 with Jonathan. Um, if people want to connect with you, if they want to, you know, get more, like follow you and all that, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram. It's who is Gooch. That's W H O I S G O O C H. Man, I appreciate Yo, it. Man. I, I need a, I need a, I need a, I need a, I need a <laughs> impromptu hug, brother. Brother, brother, brother. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Listen, yo, this is what, yo, look, look, this is what hey. we do here inside the vault with Ash Cash. Another, yo, another powerful episode. If you know, you know, uh, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Make sure you tap in, tune in. We are closing the vault. I'm going to see you next time on a powerful episode. Again, thevaultcares.com. I'll see you. Look, share this video. I need this go, to go viral, actually. I need you to share this video with everybody who needs to hear this. Uh, share this with your loved ones. Share this with everybody. Uh, but I'll see you next time on Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Same time, same place. In God's will. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want Ash Cash, you can catch it right here in the vault.